Celebrity Sketchbook. The Christmas Speech with Gordon Brown. Hello, people of Britain. I am Tony Blair, and I'm your Prime Minister. And I'd like to start this 2009 speech by saying that Tony, get out of the way. You are yesterday's news. Let the real man come in and say his words. But I'll still, I'll still got to talk about it. Go, 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 go. Okay, hello, and happy Christmas, mere mortals. I am not a mere mortal myself, because I will never die. 2009 has been a year. A year with considerable achievements, such as the fact that I am now completely carbon neutral, although I must admit, not when I'm in my car. And spectacular non-achievements, such as my plan to take over the world, that wasn't supposed to surface until I'd done it. Unfortunately, I'm only the British Prime Minister, and doing that job, you don't even get to run the country. Tony Blair still thinks he does that. Lol. I hear that he spends a lot of his time in Europe, now that he wants to run the place again. I had a great summer, you know. The weather was fantastic. Not that I noticed really, though, as I was spending a lovely time with some of my favourite people in Amsterdam. And I went to Thailand the week after, and the people there are even friendlier. Now, I am proud of my pledge to the London Astronomer Society this year to get this planet known as the Brown Planet, in recognition of my presence on it. As you know, I am an environmentalist. I have this year stopped travelling by train to use aircraft for all domestic and Western European travel. Journey times have been halved, and as a result, that means less is being polluted into the atmosphere. I, as already stated, am carbon neutral. I now recycle everything I find, such as obsolete manifestos and old Labour Party ideas. There are so many of those that you should be able to make a warehouse of coffee tables out of them. In 2009, record numbers of people became unwell thanks to the swine flu epidemic, penetrating the shores of Great Britain. But while many of you were understandably upset about the situation, it was great news for the NHS, which as a result of swine flu saw a record level of investment in new patients and new nurses. New illnesses create jobs, and new nurses create new patients. So although it was a head-scratching time for us all, I must conclude that in the end, the swine flu problem ended up as a beneficial one to both our NHS and our health economy. And also, I am glad to report that I was able to slip in quite a few other things which will remain a state secret for some time into the swine flu vaccine that will benefit our government and people. The year of 2009 has always been an outstanding year for education, and this is thanks in part to the continuing success of Wikipedia, which is now used in even the best universities. Speaking of universities, they have in 2009 seen record attendances with places being granted to people who would never have got them previously. More and more people are getting degrees, and I could be happy for them. There are now more degrees than students. I am becoming aware that there are more students than there are job titles in this country. So my plan for next year is to come up with some snazzy job titles for 2010. But until then, we're going to have the smartest road sweepers in Europe and we should all be infinitely thankful for that. Because virtually all their wages are going back into the state after they have graduated, which means we now get a maximum value out of our state graduates. It's blooming marvellous, isn't it? I think it is, anyway. If you are sceptical about what I have just said, then you should just take a glass-half-full view, like me. Over the course of the year, I have added many people to my Facebook account, one of my personal best achievements. And I've joined many groups and societies such as Get Jedward Buck on the X Factor. I thought when they were voted off, it was a travesty and I nearly gave them a bank holiday. Thanks to the X Factor, I have to apologise to you, electorate. I didn't manage to get much political work done. But now my Saturday nights are once again free for 2010. That is, of course, until Dancing on Ice returns to our screens in early January. But good TV often transcends good politics, doesn't it? But back to Facebook. I have been very pleased, I can tell you. 380 friends, and I was only deleted by a 100 of them. I mean, I tell you, Susan Boyle wrote on my wall, and we agreed to meet up in a Starbucks. I even became friends with Robert Mugabe, the enigmatic leader of Zimbabwe, via the people you may know tool. 
and I became a fan of Obama. The only frustrating thing for me was as being British Prime Minister, I am usually very busy, or at least that's what I say. But it was my deepest regret that I didn't find time to explore that Farmville invitation. 2009 has been quite a celebrated year, even though some of the people we celebrate have died. I will miss Michael Jackson, and I think he'll miss me too. And now I get on to my final point. Britain is in a war of terror against terror, and the terror is still in Afghanistan, and our soldiers have been deployed in terror against them. It is terrible, but unfortunately, as we end 2009, it is not yet over, and I don't see in the immediate future that the conflict will come to a resolution, because the Taliban still thinks it's hard, and even Ross Kemp couldn't scare them off. And I say this to any other countries that would like to come and have a go. I am sure, in time, that Britain will beat all her natural enemies, including Afghanistan, Iran, North Korea, Zimbabwe, and David Cameron. If you think you're hard, bring it on! And that's all, folks, for 2009. I hope I have been able to both inspire you and enlighten you. I am your Prime Minister, so on the count of three, stop whatever you are doing and kneel. After another five seconds, please bow. Thank you, and Merry Christmas! I have to say, Mr. Brown, I'm very impressed by your speech. Go! Now that I have done my Christmas Day speech, it is time for the Parliament Christmas Day dinner. I spent 10 weeks trying to find a unique and imaginative name for my Christmas Day speech, and I eventually came up with this. To be or not to be, I have a dream. My policy at lunchtime has always been that I am very hungry and I want some food. Today, regretfully, is Christmas Day and therefore the Parliament McDonald's is unfortunately shut. But we do have a sumptuous banquet that has been funded by the taxpayer. I mean, you know they have to be quite generous at Christmas to the taxpayers, like they have a choice. I will admit to you this, I am quite plump already, but at Christmas it is a man's duty to get even plumper. Whether that be stealing your kids' chocolates or eating Father Christmas's mince pies and milk. Uh, but by the looks of that table over there with the food on, I won't have to do any of that stuff. So, MPs of Britain, I officially announce the commencation of the Parliament Christmas Day Dinner 2009. Now! Get your forks and knives out of your pockets. And let's do battle. Give me that spare rib, you food hog. This isn't a socialist dinner. Screw you, Cameron. I am going to enjoy this rib up to and including the bone. Uh, Tony, could you throw me some chips? Okay, as a prime minister, I'm sorry, but I've taken them all. They're in my handbag. But there's some seaweed left. There's a whole tray of it. I'll toss it over to you. You idiot! You've got seaweed all over the seats. On the positive side, at least unlike the House of Lords, our seats are green, so no one will notice. As a matter of fact, I was over at the House of Lords earlier, and they had a chilly accident. Luckily for them, their seats are red. Gipsy that ice cream. Hagen Dazs, my favourite. Mmm, Hagen Dazs. You do realise, David, that this lunch is going out live on BBC Parliament, and you've just endorsed an ice cream company. Not to mention make a fool of yourself. Oh shit! I had no idea. Of, of course I knew. But even so, the Conservative Party supports advertising, even on the BBC. Let's sit down and eat our meals. I might even have to go to the toilet, mainly because my request to the Chancellor for funding to fit commodes into the House of Commons seats was turned down. What a fool he was. Did he not realise how much parliamentary time is wasted by MPs going to the toilet? What does he think? What does he think Westminster is? A coal centre? Anyway, bon appétit to you all. Boy, I can't wait to have a wank tonight. I usually find the end result more satisfying than new European legislation. What was that, Brown? What I do in the privacy of my underpants is my own concern. So shut up. Can I ask you a question, Prime Minister Brown? Go!